The stu um, student government had their first meeting last Thursday and we formed our committees that we'll be focusing on this year. We decided to keep the recycling committee, except we realized that this might not be necessary to work on. We just decided to keep it so we wouldn't have to make one later in the year if an issue came up. Um, another committee that we'll be focusing on is one um, looking at earn time policies, another um, looking at technology policies and dress code. And we also um, talked about um, having our chair as Sean Rosine. And that's all that's been on in our meeting. Perfect. I just want to remind Ainsley, and I know you'll take it back, but mm -hmm. when you meet and all those that you report out with me, whether it's weekly or whatever, yes. on your uh, upcoming events, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Halloran. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, let me start, we've got a bunch of handouts. Let me start with the legislative uh, financial aid. As you know, uh, the governor had vetoed the original, um, the original budget and Oh, Lisa Rash here, too. What's that? Lisa King. When did Lisa go? Finish. I just saw. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, the form you have in front of you is, uh, you have a few, but this uh, preliminary state education aid numbers, the source of the numbers is uh, through the New Hampshire Administrators Association and reaching higher New Hampshire is, uh, came up with a number, came out with the numbers, and no one has refuted these. Now, we'll wait till the checks actually come. Uh, and as you know, with aid, it's targeted to the individual communities, and so that money will be split. Uh, I shouldn't say split because that insinuates 50-50. That money will be dispersed between the elementary board and that tax assessment here in the high school assessment. Uh, and so what we have is for, for two years only, this is not a forever carved in the statute. This was a, this was a deal to use existing surplus uh, and some increased state aid to get money back to the cities and towns. And so above and beyond what we were going to get, which in some districts was a cut, um, this is the money that will come to us over two years. So when you look at Ashland at 203,000, it, it won't be split halves and halves. It'll be some combination of money. But over the two year biennial, uh, 203,000, almost 204,000 will go to Ashland above and beyond what they were expecting. And you can see Campton at 321. Holdness is going to get $18,000 less. Uh, Plymouth is going to get almost a million dollars more. Uh, Rumney, 178.5, Thornton, 144, and 144. And then that's, those are the towns that we were, we were cooperative. The two remaining towns in uh, SAU 48, Ellsworth is going to get an extra uh, $1,500, and Waterville Valley is getting um, $4,400 less than they, they would have. So, uh, as you know, we've had all of our school district meetings, so all of this money. It's going to go back to property tax reduction. There's no skimming off the top, or we got to get this. It's flat out. I want to be. I want the public to know that all of this money will go back to reduce uh, property taxes. Um, and we appreciate their generosity in March when they funded the budgets at a lower number of the. So now that the higher number comes in, the public deserves um, the tax reduction. Uh, that, so that's the that's the legislative update, Madam Chair. Um, and uh, Mr. Parsons will talk a little bit. Of, he'll talk about homecoming, and I'll talk a little bit about um, our open house on uh, on Sunday uh, from two to four. And then the other forms you have will discuss under uh, discussion items, which are on enrollment, on enrollment numbers and projections. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this whole week, kids are gearing up uh, for homecoming uh, as we speak. There's great uh, participation downstairs in the lobby. They're uh, decorating their bulletin boards um, for each class. Uh, I was really impressed with the number of kids that are down there uh, uh, making it happen. 
<coughs> a couple of different events, I think, Ainsley. Aren't they, they're doing a lip sync this year, right? Yeah. Which is different. It's the first time that I'm going to see it. And they're going to do that in the gym during the pep rally itself. And it uh, be interesting to see how creative the kids get. But they've all got four different themes. And uh, uh, they get quite into pep rally. And the pep rally will be Friday. The gym will be rocking. Um, games, home games have been all week throughout the whole uh, week. I think Saturday will be a full full tilt too. I think Jimmy's got soccer and football. I think he may have field hockey too here on Saturday too. And then the dance will be starting at 7 o'clock, 7 to 10 in the gym. And that's a big dance for the kids because uh, <coughs> seniors got to come up full force because that dance really covers them for their prom. So I want to commend the four uh, 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 advisors, Brian Antman, uh, Danae Morris, and Mary Boyle, and Doug Ross, who've done a great job on uh, getting the kids ready for this year's homecoming. They've been real good with it. Uh, every day is a different theme, so they, they meet every day and they compete. What was today, Hazel? Um, today was School Pride. School Pride Day. So that is, uh, again, uh, Friday and then the dance on Saturday. October 11th next week is our in-service uh, and we have it planned here and we are, uh, again, uh, through the efforts of uh, Bob Price and Tanya Orlando, we continue to work uh, with the faculty and the faculty leaders as we progress uh, with the vision of the graduate and our growth plan. And I'll, I'll give you a full report out of the 15th on what we accomplished on that day in the 11th, but that's a big day for us. There's no school on No, no school. Yeah, we have two in-service days, Maureen, uh, this one in October, and the other one is in March. And that's my report, Madam Chair, unless there's questions for me, we're happy to answer. All right, thank you. And the committees did not meet since our last meeting, but we do have the next meeting scheduled for October 15th, and that will be 5 o'clock right here. Has yeah. SCC yeah. met? Pardon? Did SCC No, meet? SCC will meet um, October. Okay. They did, did they meet? No, they didn't, they meet next week, excuse me, because it was not Monday, yeah, no, sorry. And they're doing the senior cap stuff. Yep. <coughs> Discussion items. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, before I forget it, I do, each of you has an open house. Um, advertisement. And let me let me explain what that is. Uh, uh, at the end of homecoming, oftentimes we have visitors to the community and, and, and folks that come home for for homecoming or other events, wedding receptions, and things. It's a very busy weekend here. Plymouth uh, State University is also having their homecoming. So that afternoon, we have an informal, uh, and I mean informal. Uh, open house for the CTE section of the building and um, the doors will be open. Uh, I think Mr. Parsons has arranged for some some students to be here uh, if if people want a, a guided tour, <coughs> sort of built to be sort of an unguided tour through, through the CTE center. So we'll have the doors open. I'll be here. Uh, other members of the staff will be here. Um, but it, it's just, <clears throat> it's not a big formality, there's no ribbon cutting, there's none, none of those things. It's an opportunity for folks um, just to come through the building on, on a Sunday um, if they'd like to. So that is extended fully to the public and uh, uh, we'd love to have you here. And also, as, as everyone knows, uh, Mr. Parsons loves to give uh, tours of the entire building uh, <laughs> to folks from the community. Uh, especially when, when school's in session, because that's the most fun is to, see, to be here with, when the kids are here. So uh, if uh, people are interested, Sunday from 2 to 4. And the flyers will be stuffed in uh, the football programs, and they're out and about in the community. And I know we've warmed up our Instagram account, and I know that this is on it, and uh, we're getting there. And uh, let's put my horse and pony back in the barn and go on Instagram. So, uh, so we're off and running, and uh, uh, so the, I think the word is around. We didn't do a formal print campaign. We just we just got it out socially where the people are. Um, it, which brings me to district enrollment projections. Um, get some forms for Christine. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, it's right in the high school and then go on to uh, the entire SAU. Uh, so today, which is uh, October 1st, is the day of the official enrollment. So today we were uh, 636 students in the building. Last year at this time we had 667. So as you can see, we're down 31 students, 4.6%. We had projected to be uh, 653, so we were off 17 students from our projection. Uh, and we lost a few students from opening day. Uh, and that's just families moving around. Um, so the, the, project, the original projection for next year uh, was 666. That's what we projected last year. It looks like now uh, we will be uh, at about 649 for next year. So we'll be building the budget uh, for that number of students. All schools <coughs> this year in the SAU, uh, we're at 1854. Last year we were at 1904. We're down 50 students, 2.6%. And as you can see from your chart, that, that, that's a staircase. <coughs> it's going in the wrong direction um, from, from our standpoint. This is a 20 year look at us. Uh, back in the year, uh, fiscal year one, we had uh, 2,427 students, and uh, 20 years later, we're at 1,854, which uh, statistically puts us probably where the rest of the state is. It's just our numbers aren't as large as some other some other places, but um, it's a significant decline over 20 years. It reflects the aging of the uh, of the state and also. Uh, the demographics is our, our grads are, are leaving us. And uh, I look around the table and a lot of our, our children have, have just, they're in other places. And um, so it's just the nature of things. Enrollment projections. Now, again, this is a net zero for walk ins and walk outs. Uh, and I don't know what our number was. It's, it's around zero this year between kids that left and kids that came in. But looking out uh, for the next seven or so years, um, uh, this year we're at 636, at 649, 653, 643, 630, 605, relatively stable, uh, and then uh, a dip into the 500s in the year uh, 2025. Now, who knows? That's a long way away in terms of demographics. But you, you get a sense of uh, where we are, and then we bounce a little bit back up. But when you look at the individual chart, uh, you see some, some troubling trends in some of these schools, which, quite frankly, I know this is heresy to say this, uh, but I, I talked about it the other night in Holderness, and if I can talk about it there, I can talk about it anywhere. Uh, regionalization, it just, when you start looking at uh, Wentworth with, uh, you know, the eighth grade of five and the seventh grade of five, uh, uh, and then kindergarten at five, and then you see, you know, the biggest bump is 11 in the, in the first grade. You pop up to their neighbor in Rumney, and they're at five and seven, and, and some of those others. You know, uh, down the road, I think, you know, there may, be, there may have to be discussions about some economy of scale and, and some sense of. You know where are we going, and and uh, you know we, we we have a lot of overhead in a lot of towns mm -hmm. that doesn't pass the 
economy of scale test. Um, and, and I'll leave it like that because I'll be lampooned for heart for, for But uh, again, Plymouth holding its own at 404, uh, Holiness at 143. Uh, Thornton, a growing community. Uh, they, they, when you look at Thornton, they are a growing community. Uh, uh, they're at 213. They're busting at the seams. Community's talking about not only school needs, but community needs up there. And it's a, it's a pretty healthy discussion. So when you when you take a look at take a look at these numbers, I think um, don't be surprised if folks if you folks if you're still here and other folks uh, at some point are going to start thinking a little bit more about uh, regionalization. Sam, um, the question I get it, um, and I so I assume since our, our enrollment is projected to go down a little bit, it's not not drastic, but a little bit for the high school. Question I get sometimes is. Yeah, a lot of variety of questions. Yeah. What's the cutoff for Division Two versus Division Three? And if it's and if this is happening everywhere, I assume that it, it's probably not likely to change. Yeah. But it, it, the bottom number is six hundred. Uh, so we're dancing at, at the. If I may, Mark, yeah. every, every two years they do uh, uh, classification meets at the committee of the NHIA, and they will work with those numbers. So this year the numbers are up usually in a two-year cycle. So they will meet individual, and they need to balance it out there. So the numbers will look different in different sports. The numbers for football will not be the same numbers for field hockey or, or baseball or softball. So they look at the, it's, it's a big, a significant uh, drop off for a lot of schools too. So they try to keep them in, you know what I mean? So they move the numbers right. They'll move the numbers to see uh, who accommodates the, uh, the school. So you won't see a big drafting. Like, I mean, I mean, last year 11 it went to three in football, you know, and they're doing quite well there. Uh, but their numbers, they thought they're, they're under, well, you know, they're, they're under 550 somewhere now. But where all these numbers are dropping, you're going to see. I don't, I don't foresee us moving down because they'll, they'll move those games around. Yeah, I'd rather not move down. I, 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 I Sort of traditional who our right. who our rivals are, and uh, I don't move, I don't mind moving down in some sports where we're not as successful. Um, I know that there was a lot of commotion when Manchester West moved down in some sports, but it really helped their programs. Uh, and and uh, and then some school Hanover's gone up in, in some sports that the soccer, for instance, and hockey that they're, they're always very talented in, and they're up in Division One. So. I like that flexibility. Um, I don't want people jockeying around to try and win titles, but but to to be honest and make an assessment of where, you're, where how strong your program is, um, and I think the votes have always been there on the committees to do the right thing by yeah, kids. Yeah. So, um, I mean, how long has Laconia been down in three now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, 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 all the time. And they're, they're comfortable there. They're competitive. Right. They're certainly not running away with it. What's your they're going to be in the middle four hundred, yeah. yeah. maybe the, the yeah, 420, 430. yeah. Newfound, really, think, the four twenty, four thirty. New five I think, off the top of my head, three thirty. Yeah, three twenty. Yeah. So. One question that comes up occasionally that I get, and we have we have a legal opinion we got years ago, is can this co-op grow from a nine through twelve? And the answer is yes. Uh, it takes a vote of all the communities to add grades but the co-op can grow. So, uh, uh, you know, that there's a great economy of scale here. And, and uh, uh, so, as communities begin to, to assess themselves in the future, that question will come up and say, well, do we expand the co-op to 7 through 12? Uh, you know, everybody wants to keep the youngest kids at home, and rightfully so. Um, but can, can this co-op go to 7 through 12? And the answer is yes. It just takes a vote of the folks in the district. And, what, and how many students can, what's the capacity of students in this building? The core is 1,000. Okay. So the core facility is built for 1,000. It's a squeeze. We've been there. It, it's a squeeze. Um, but uh, yeah, you can, there's, there's room. Thank you. 
So those are the, those are the stats. Um, I, in, in my last year leaving, I get to throw these bombs out for, for people to talk about. But it is, it's food for thought, and that's, what, that's why we're doing it, is to say the next 10 years are not going to be like the last 10 years. They aren't. They're, they're not. And so um, our leaders in all of our communities, um, I think, are going to be called upon, particularly if we stay with property tax, they're going to be called upon to do uh, some thinking about the way that we can become, not so much cuts, but the way we become more efficient at what we do and, and why are we doing some of these things. So that's sort of the spiel in the district enrollment in Virginia. Okay, ma'am, budget. Uh, just want to get your thoughts conversationally about priorities. Um, Mr. Parsons and I are going to look at staffing levels. Um, and we're going to look at class size. We dipped an awful lot in some of our, our class sizes. And um, we already have uh, a couple of resignations. And uh, it, it allows us, and, and I'm not, I don't want to be chopping people's jobs. And, but, but through attrition, if we, if we can tighten up a little bit, that, that would be great. We're not far off the mark. We're not, we're, we're not talking lots and lots of, of positions. We're talking about a handful of positions. And as I said, we already have two uh, folks who are, who are retiring. And there's another individual thinking about it. So I think that we have a little bit of flex and allow Mr. Parsons and I to look at staffing levels. The other thing I've asked um, John Francis to look at is uh, to continue to scour the Homeland Security recommendations for the facility. We had an unannounced drill the other day in Plymouth, and we learned some things about our campus um, that uh, only a drill like that really would have flushed out for us. So we're going through uh, and tightening that up. Uh, and I'll tell you, the police and fire learned some things about their operation. I'll give you one for instance. Uh, the uh, person directing traffic up on uh, Highland Street has a highway department radio not tied into the police. And so that, be that became an issue um, on Old Board Bridge Road through no fault of anyone. It just, all right, I'm going to learn from this. So those are the things that have sort of popped up and, and we're beginning to uh, to do that. I have to tell you, the adding a campus security officer has been uh, wonderful for all of us. I think not only has Officer uh, Carol been terrific, um, she's she's just fit in perfectly um, with, with how we do business here. And uh, she's personally been delightful. And I think the kids have really responded to her presence, too. So we're really pleased with that. And then uh, we'll have our general list of needs. But I guess. Um, uh, I, I just open for comments from members of the board about what you'd like us to take a look at in the budget process. What are the driving unit agreements up? Pardon? What are the contracts up with the teachers and the support staff? Oh, I think the teachers are the following year, and perhaps support staff too, or they're one year later. Um, but I know there's nothing happening this morning. Staffing is the biggest issue when you're looking at it. Yeah. So. We're pretty set, pretty set from a facility standpoint. I mean, we spent some yeah. money to get it up to snuff. So yeah, we're looking at uh, in the facilities. It's more off of homeland security yeah. um, than it is anything else. Both John and I. Uh, Larry Gibson and Jim Blake will be looking at this area over here. It's um, it gets a little dicey out back over here, and I, I mean it just appears disorganized. And we've got to bring a little more organization um, to the back, and that's the area. But in, in, but in, in defense of the operation, that's sort of the fix it land over there for lawnmowers and and all that stuff. So it just happens to be right on our campus and in an area where people now are starting to travel. So we're going to take a look at that. Maybe some fencing and some <coughs> other things. We'll, we'll organize it a little bit better. 
All right, well, well, we'll poke along, and then as we put the budget together, we will identify some of the things that we talked about, and then perhaps have a discussion through the process of the merits of some of the recommendations. And we will also put a list of things together for you to think about into the next couple of years. It's not a, it's not, a, it's not a wish list. It's just things that we ought to get to at some point over the next three to five years. <coughs> All right. I have two pieces of correspondence, Madam Chair. One uh, is a, a letter addressed to the chair of the association, and also I have a, a letter from a student uh, to the board. So I will, I will pass this on to, to the board. I don't think you need to act on either one today. Okay. It was correspondence for the board. All right. Did you go back and approve the minutes? Did you go back and approve the minutes? Because you got to yes. go Yeah. Yeah, I was going to do that before we go into non public. And I, uh, I do have a personnel issue for non public session. Okay. Um, you won't be voting on anything, but I, I just want to get your feel on something. Mm -hmm. All right. So any other business? Now that we have enough people to vote, we do have the minutes from September 17th. Unless there are any corrections or amendments, they stand approved as written. All righty. Any other board member concerns? Do I hear a motion to go into non-public for personnel? That was Christy. Morning. Christy, would you like to second it? Yes, I would. Thank you. Thank you.